Hi, I'm John Viner. And I'm Scott Pig with 7th Wave. As independent energy efficiency researchers, we've tested hundreds of heating and cooling systems. We know that while most systems get the job done, a lot of them are not operating at their full potential. So you've paid thousands of dollars for your heating and cooling system, and you want it to operate at peak uh, efficiency and deliver the comfort that, of course, you paid for, right? So we're here to talk about what your heating and cooling professional um, can do to make sure you're getting the top performance and superior comfort from your system. We'll walk through the basics and talk about most the most important steps to ensure your system runs at tip-top efficiency. So you might be thinking about installing a new system or just wondering if the one that you have is really up to snuff. Either way, we'll help you to know what to talk to your installer or service technician about and we'll give you some pointers for things that you can do on your own. We'll focus on the problem areas that we've observed in our own research where we've done independent testing on hundreds of systems. What do you say we get started? Let's go. All right. Okay, here we are in the basement and we've got a very typical Midwestern central heating and cooling system set up. We've got a gas furnace right here that heats air in the winter and circulates the air throughout the ductwork um, with a blower down in the bottom of the cabinet that's located down here. This house also has a central air conditioning uh, system with two main parts. An indoor coil which is located on top of the furnace and an outdoor coil that we're going to take a look at in, in just a minute. These two pieces um, are connected by copper lines that holds the refrigerant and they are located right here. So the installer um, is going to run the copper lines from the indoor to the outdoor unit. And in the summer, the furnace blower does double duty to circulate the cooled air throughout the house during the summer and, of course, the winter. Now, trust me, there are a lot of important details to get right when installing a system like this. That's why we leave it to a professional to get all those details done right. And we'll find that installers generally do a great job of making sure you've got a good, safe system installed that, that meets code. But there are some things that you can do or your installer can do to make sure your system runs at peak efficiency and gives you the comfort that you need year round. So the, it increases comfort and energy efficiency. We'll briefly go over some of these points and they are getting the right size furnace and air conditioner when installing a new system, getting the refrigerant charge level that's located inside these copper lines I pointed out, and the firing rate of your furnace, so the gas pressure, is really important for the heating system um, when uh, they set the furnace up. Other items are adjusting airflow for maximum efficiency and comfort, and we're going to go over that with some level of detail, and managing your thermostat. Okay, so let's talk about sizing your system, and by that I mean selecting a system that has a heating and cooling capacity that's enough to keep up on a really cold day or a really hot day in the summer, but not too much capacity. Now obviously if you're not looking to replace your existing system in the near future, this won't apply to you, so you might want to skip ahead to this video a few minutes. So we've literally tracked hundreds of systems in Wisconsin and Minnesota and we can say that it's really rare to find a heating or cooling system that's too small. And that's because the last thing your installer wants to do is to have to come back and tear out a system that can't keep up. But we do occasionally run into systems that are way bigger than they need to be. The problem with those is that they cycle on and off a lot and they're sending giant blasts of heating and cooling around the house. That can be annoying and noisier than it needs to be. So a system that's way too big is also going to cost you more to install. So bigger is not better when it comes to heating and cooling. But how do you make sure that you get a properly sized system? Well, the best thing to do is to make sure that your installer does what are called load calculations. These days, just about every contractor has computer software where they can type in all kinds of information about the size of your home, the insulation levels, and other details, and get an estimate of the heating and cooling capacity that you need. Now, those load calculations are only as good as the information that they put into the software, so make sure that they spend some time measuring your house, poking around for insulation levels, and recording all those important details. So that's the science of load calculation, but there's also an art to it. That's because depending on how you manage your thermostat, 
you probably want a little bit of extra capacity for heating the house up on a cold winter morning or cooling it down when you come home at the end of a hot summer day. But here's the key. Those load calculations tend to be conservative to begin with, so if you stick with what the software says, you'll have that extra capacity that you need. What you don't want your installer to do is add a safety factor on top of the load calculations. That's just a recipe for an oversized system. You might also want to think about buying a multi-stage system like the one that we have here. I'm a big fan of those because it's kind of a way to have your cake and eat it too. You get a system that operates at a nice low output level for most of the winter or the summer, but you have that extra capacity when you need it. If you go that route, just make sure you also get a thermostat that's uh, designed to match with that system. Okay, so let's go outside and take a look at the air conditioner now. Here we are at the outdoor unit part of this air conditioning system. You'll notice that we have two condensers. This home happens to have two air conditioners. And you might be surprised to know that air conditioners and heat pumps are not just plug and play devices. They're complicated systems that there is set up procedures that need to take place. And one of the most important elements to get right is the amount of refrigerant in the system. And that varies from home to home because the distance from the outdoor unit to the indoor unit varies. The length in feet change from home to home and that affects how much refrigerant that installer will have to install. If there's not enough refrigerant in the system, it won't produce its full cooling capacity and its efficiency will go down and there may be some discomfort problems. On the other hand, if there's too much refrigerant in there, it will usually put out its full cooling capacity, which is good, but it will use more electricity than it really needs and that also hurts efficiency. So top, for top efficiency, you want that refrigerant charge to be just right. Now we've tested literally hundreds of systems through our research and what we've seen that it's not common for air conditioners to be overcharged to have too much refrigerant but undercharging is actually pretty common we find that two out of every three systems that we look at and test need some sort of adjustment to the amount of refrigerant they're usually not off by a large amount and getting it right usually means an actually five percent boost in efficiency but we've seen systems that have been way off and sometimes a 30 to 40 percent performance jump in efficiency from correcting that amount of refrigerant has occurred. So the refrigerant check is definitely something you want to make sure that your installer and service professional does for you. It's especially important for older systems because their performance falls off, their efficiency drops the most when the amount of refrigerant is not right. So how do you make your system have the right amount of refrigerant in it? You just want to make sure that your service technician does what's called a superheat or a subcool test. So ask for that when your system is installed. Now that that sounds like something out of a comic book, superheat or subcool, but it really just means that they put a set of gauges on to measure pressure and temperature in the system, something like this. It takes refrigerant pressure temperature in a couple of different points while the system is running. That will tell them whether they need to add or remove refrigerant to keep the charge just right. Once it's tuned up for refrigerant and it's just right, it shouldn't need to be adjusted again. This tune-up step is something that systems of any age can benefit from it. It doesn't need to be completed on an annual checkup, but once it's done, it should be set and left alone. One thing to keep in mind is that this test can only be done when your system is running and when it's reasonably warm outside. So if your air conditioner or heat pump gets installed in the winter or when it's really cold, they really need to come back in the spring to do this test. On a cool fall day like today, we're right on the borderline of being able to test this system. Also, since we're talking refrigerant, on the installation, the service professional needs to make sure that those refrigerant lines on the inside are clean and all the air and moisture are removed. And as long as we're out here, I'll point out that this system works best when the outdoor unit, the condensing coils, are clean and have plenty of airflow um, space for airflow up and out of this unit. Having a unit like this partly, partially enclosed with this deck 
can compromise the efficiency a little. And if these coils happen to get dirty, the combination of dirty coils and the deck blocking the airflow, it can definitely hurt the efficiency. You might be able to hose off some debris in the summertime, um, but if it really gets clogged, you probably should have a service technician do the, do the cleaning of the coils. These coils are, are sensitive and we don't want to make sure we bend those or hurt them in any way. In our testing, we typically see about a 5% efficiency improvement from cleaning dirty outdoor coils. Okay, here we are back in the basement and now we're going to talk about um, the gas furnace and making sure that furnace is putting out the right amount of heat. This gas valve, which is right here in the furnace, is kind of the heart of your furnace. Really important to get that right and make sure that it is properly adjusted um, for making sure that your furnace is producing the amount of heat that it was designed to do. If that firing rate, which is dictates how much heat is going to be produced um, by the furnace. The firing rate is either too low or too high. It can be hard on the equipment and you won't get the full performance out of it. In our testing, we typically find that about one out of eight furnaces is a bit off in terms of the firing rate, which means the pressure of the gas going into the gas valve is slightly off, a little high or low, which again can affect system performance and durability of the equipment. Your installer should put a pressure gauge on a special port on this valve and make sure that the valve is set to deliver the right amount of gas to the burners for your house. Okay, a great way to check whether your furnace is firing at the right rate is for your installer to fire it up and just time how fast the dials spin on the gas meter. That way they can measure uh, how fast it's consuming gas and check whether it's within the manufacturer's specifications. Okay, let's talk about airflow. Every furnace and air conditioner is designed to operate most efficiently at a particular rate of flow for the air that is moving through the system. But every home's ductwork is a bit different, so that's something that really needs to be adjusted whenever a new system is installed. So let's start by talking about cooling airflow in the summer. When we go out and test systems, we often find that cooling airflow isn't set properly. But that's pretty important to get right because it affects both the efficiency and the comfort that you get from the system. Here in the upper Midwest, what we find most often is airflow that is too high. That's because compared to other parts of the country, we tend to have big furnaces that are with big blowers that are paired up with small air conditioners and that leads to high airflow. The problem with high airflow is that it hurts the ability of the system to take humidity out of the air. We all know that it's not the heat, it's the humidity, right? It also takes more power to move all that air through the system so the overall efficiency of the system goes down. In our testing we found that at least half of central cooling systems like this one could benefit from adjusting airflow. And we typically see about a 5% efficiency improvement from making that adjustment. But some systems are way off and we see much bigger improvements from getting airflow properly set. So there are a number of ways to measure cooling uh, airflow and we have another more technical video that goes into the details of all of that if you're interested. The important thing is just to make sure that your installer does do a good job of making that measure, measurement so that you know that uh, airflow is set properly for your system. And by the way, many higher end furnaces like this one have variable speed blower technology that can automatically maintain the right airflow even if your filter gets dirty or you start opening or closing registers in the house. And that's a real advantage of that type of system. So we also want to make sure that airflow is okay in the winter as well. It's really easy to do because once we know that the furnace is putting out the right amount of heat, we can get a sense of whether the airflow is okay by measuring the temperature difference um, between the warm side of the furnace, the supply, the heated air, and the cooler return air um, coming back to the furnace. So every furnace has a nameplate on it that shows the required range of temperature rise or the required temperature difference between the supply and the return. 
for most people, being somewhere in the middle of this manufacturer's range is a good place to be. As long as we're talking about airflow, let's not forget about this all important component, the, the filter. So this little device keeps dust and dirt out of all of this expensive equipment. And depending on the type of filter you use, it may also play a role in uh, maintaining indoor air quality by filtering out allergens and other contaminants. Now we all know it's important to regularly check this filter and replace it or clean it when it gets clogged. And depending on the kind of filter you have and how fast it gets dirty, you might want to do that once every couple of months or up to once a year. But what I really want to talk about today is how the type of filter that you use can affect system performance. And that's a conversation that doesn't always happen between consumers and installers or service technicians. So this is your basic disposable hardware store filter and it's perfectly fine for protecting the equipment but it doesn't do anything in terms of filtering out things that you might care about in terms of indoor air quality contaminants. So for, for that kind of a job, most people go to a filter that has a higher filtration efficiency, like this one. And there are a number of different rating systems for measuring the efficiency of filters and taking out contaminants. But the most common one is called the MERV rating, and we'll talk about that today. So that this filter has a MERV rating of 2 on a scale of 1 to 16, but this one has a MERV rating of 8, so it, it takes out particles that are much finer than your basic disposable hardware filter. But here's the thing, as you go to a higher and higher MERV rating filters, it gets harder and harder to push the air through each square inch of the filter media. Now, furnaces like this high-end variable speed furnace will compensate for that by ramping up their blower speed and to maintain airflow while still pushing air through this finer grain material. But many systems, and most older systems, will not do that. What will happen if you put a high MERV filter into one of those systems is that your airflow will drop and it may hurt your system's performance. So it's really important to talk to your installer or service technician about the type of filter you want to use and have them check and make sure that airflow is okay uh, with, with whatever filter you select. Now, if you're installing a new system, there is a way to kind of have your cake and eat it too. And that's by having a wider filter slot installed at the time that the new system is put in so that you can use a filter like this. So this filter also has a MERV rating of 8, just like the one we were looking at earlier, but you can see that it's much wider. This is a 4-inch filter compared to a 1-inch filter that we were looking at before. And you, because it's so much thicker and it has all these folds in it, there's just a lot more surface area for the air to go through. So even though it's more resistive to airflow, it still can uh, maintain the proper airflow with, with the similar resistance to that uh, first filter that we looked at. So if you're interested in filtering out fine particles, you definitely want to talk to your installer about what type of filter to install. And one more thing about airflow for these forced air systems. Having the right airflow through the furnace doesn't mean that you're going to be comfortable throughout the house. It's really the job of the ductwork to send the right amount of airflow to the each of the rooms. If that doesn't happen, you'll end up with some rooms that are uncomfortable. The ductwork usually looks something like this. And to adjust airflow to each of the rooms, often the ductwork has dampers. These dampers can be adjusted. Often they're unknown that they exist or not, and you have to dig around. But many are installed with adjustable dampers to vary the airflow to particular rooms. So if you have rooms that are uncomfortable, make sure to talk to your service uh, technician about them. There may be these opportunities to make the adjustments, or you can look into making those adjustments yourself on the damper handles. Also, if you have ductwork that runs through attics or garages, 
those really need to be made sure that those are airtight and insulated well. Otherwise, you'll be wasting a lot of money sending the heating and cooling air that you've just paid to condition to the outdoors. Keep in mind that not all comfort problems are solved by the distribution or the duct system and getting the right amount of airflow to each of the rooms. It may be that that space has um, a lack of insulation in the walls or the attic or there's air leakage in and out of that home or um, through the walls and again the floor system etc. So air sealing and insulating around the building shell and also adjusting the ducts can provide a greater level of comfort in many um, areas of the home. And finally, how could we not talk about your thermostat, which is kind of the nerve center of the whole system and the one part that you probably interact with regularly. If you're choosing a new thermostat, we can definitely recommend a programmable model like this one because the research has shown that setting back in the winter or setting up in the summer is an effective way to save energy. In this part of the country, for every degree that you set back regularly for an eight hour period can save you about 1% on your heating usage. So if you set back overnight 10 degrees every night over the course of the heating season, you can expect to save about 10%. And keep in mind that these days there are lots of exciting new smart thermostats on the market that can connect to the internet and have features that can save you even more. Those thermostats also make it easier for you to adjust your heating cooling set points from anywhere using your phone. But today I want to focus on one thermostat setting that doesn't get as much attention as it should, and that's the fan setting. Let's take a closer look at that setting. The fan setting allows you to choose between running your fan in auto mode or on mode. Auto means that the fan only runs when your system is actively heating or cooling your home, and that's what most people use. But there's also a setting for the fan that's called on, and that setting means that the fan runs all the time regardless of whether your system is calling for heating or cooling. Now some people do this because they want the system to be filtering their air constantly, or maybe they feel that it evens out the temperature in their home. The thing is though that that fan can use a lot of electricity. It can also really hurt the ability of your cooling system to de dehumidify your home in the summer. So if you're running your fan all the time now but aren't sure why you're doing that, our advice is to try setting that fan back to auto for a while just to see if it makes a difference. If you don't notice any big difference in your comfort, you might want to just keep it on auto and you'll save some money that way. If you do need to run your fan all the time and you're looking into a new furnace, you should definitely consider a variable speed uh, unit because those furnaces use a lot less electricity when the fan is running. You could save several hundred dollars a year worth of electricity using a variable speed furnace compared to a conventional one. All right, let's review a, a few tips for things that you can talk to your installer or service technician about to make sure your system is running in top form. Number one, if you're buying a new system, Make sure your contractor sizes it with load calculations and sticks to what that calculation says. Two, have them check refrigerant charge with a superheat or subcool test. Three, check the firing rate of the furnace, the amount of gas pressure to the furnace. It's going to make sure it's producing the amount of heat it was designed for. Another is to check for proper airflow. It's really important to make sure the airflow through your system in both heating and cooling are adequate. Next. Let your contractor know about problems you have with your heating or cooling systems for uncomfortable rooms because they might be able to balance the system or adjust those dampers that are going to correct that comfort issue for you. And here are a few things that you can do on your own. Talk to your contractor about the type of filter that you intend to use and make sure you change it regularly. Make sure the coils on the outdoor unit of your air conditioner stay, stay clean. And you can set back your thermostat and be aware of how you use the fan settings on your system. Well, we hope you would enjoyed this video and uh, thanks for watching.